Alright, everything is ready for primer, so we're just going to clean everything up and hang it and shoot it. So, you know what to do. Stay tuned. always remember your nooks and crannies, um, things like this line right in here and stuff, the dust will get stuck in there. So you, when you're blowing it off, when you're wiping it down and everything like that, you have to spend a little bit extra time and attention to the detail. Give a little bit of um, etching primer. It doesn't have to be any specific brand or anything like that. Uh, again, you don't want to do this if you're using House of Colors because etching primer and House of Colors don't get along. But uh, we're not doing that on this one, so we can't do this. We've got everything uh, cleaned up. We've got a little acid it shot on any of our bare metal. And uh, now we'll go ahead and we'll shoot our primer. So um, I don't have to shoot full primers on everything, all one coat each time. Let's say, for instance, um, I think that this area right here is low. I'll just hit this area with a coat of primer once or twice, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll hit the entire thing. So um, I'll also shoot a light coat of... Um, like a, just a sticky coat on here, like fog coat on here, so that it helps adhere the additional coats on. And um, 
Then after I've got all my problem areas uh, set, then I can go ahead and shoot the large mass. So areas like this that aren't a money shot, a lot of times you don't hit them at all. And what's going to happen in these areas is that it will build up a fuzzy uh, type of overspray on there. And that's not going to be good because the moisture will adhere to that in the future. Uh, so uh, what I like to do is, after I shoot this a couple of times, then I'll put like one coat on this just to keep that fuzziness down. So I'm using an Iwata gun, they're pretty good guns, and uh, so I'm using an Iwata gun, they're pretty good guns, uh, it's about a hundred bucks, and I'm using a 1.3 tip, sometimes I'll use a 1.8 tip, but a lot of times I like the 1.3, which is the same that we use for painting, because when I'm shooting on my primer, I can do it almost like I'm painting shoot it on a little bit finer and uh, such. So on this particular gun, this top one here, this is our fan. So we can go like that where we can dial it in. And it'll do a spot. Typically on this one, I'll dial it all the way out. And then I'll go in just a little bit. This right here is how much material is coming out. Now, since I'm using a 1.3 material uh, tip, I turn this out about four or five turns, and then you can see that I get a nice pattern there. Now, your gun might be a little bit different. You might have to adjust these here a little bit of air pressure. The air pressure I got going to this right now is about uh, 25, 26 pounds, and I have it adjusted at the wall, not right here, so I don't have to have the uh, just the right on here, keep in my way when I want to move around. If you have your uh, air supply gauge on here and you have your filter on here, it's a bit cumbersome and stuff. So I can shoot a short hose like this, and then here's my filter right here. Now it's a lot more maneuverable and I don't wear out as quick. Uh, another good way to test and see if your gun is shooting well is to take your pattern and go straight up and down like this. Now I can shoot it here. You can see when I get the run that the run is nice and even. If my run was mainly on the outside or mainly on the inside or such, then I'd have to adjust the gun accordingly. Um, but uh, everything's set up now. And I'm just going to go ahead and shoot on the last coat, our front panel and our tailgate are looking really good. So I'll just hit the front of the tailgate and the front of our bedside to mean that the rest of everything else is going to be vinyl -like.
when I'm shooting my coats, I'm doing an overlap. So the first shot will go right here, and then the next shot, half of that will cover this, and half will cover new metal. Then the next one will come up and do the same thing. Doing the overlay gives us a more even lay down. Here you can see the bedsides all done, and they are looking pretty straight. Bed's pretty good. Still got some pits going on in there. So what we'll do from here is uh, we'll cover these pits that we can see nice and easy now. Then we'll go ahead and shoot a fog coat on it and sand it down one more time and primer it. And I'm just shooting one coat on these because, uh, again, we're going to be rhino liner in it. And really, I just shot the one coat on here so that I could see these pits and stuff. After a while, sometimes you laying down filler here and there and fog coat and this and that, you start to lose all of this stuff. You can't see it anymore so you pretty much have to primer it just so you can see what you're working on uh, the inside of the bed there is looking pretty nice you can see we could almost paint that if we wanted to really uh, not that I'm advocating that and uh, here is the other bedside So tomorrow, we'll go ahead and we'll sand all this stuff down, and uh, then the next day we'll primer it up and it'll be all done for a while. We'll see you tomorrow.